Don't, uh, we do not have enough project-based Section 8. We don't have enough properties. With foreclosures at an all-time high, unemployment increasing, and the country in an economic recession, we asked how this year's situation compared to previous ones. It's horrendous this year. So we're running a test right now for like approximately 120 days to see, and we're jotting down every single thing that happens with every applicant mm -hmm. to find out if they were rejected for what reason. Was it light? Was it gas? Was it um, excess? Was it a foreclosure? Was it, you know, we're trying to find out what was hindering anybody's application or what could normally have been a rejection, but we decided for 120 days that unless it's light and gas, we're not going to look at anything. You know, just to see if we should uplift that credit criteria that we got. Oh, so because it's getting so bad out there. I mean, the way I look at it is if I'm interviewing someone and if I had a choice that they have positive landlord, pay their rent on time, or would I be more interested in if they pay their credit cards, if they got a car repo, or if they lost a house? I look at it as I don't care about any of that. You know, our main concern, I feel, that should be, as long as they don't have light or gas in collections, and what you call it, they, could, they don't have no criminal background, let's go for it. You know, because it's, it's on the rise. So what options are there for people that are trying to get back up on their feet, but they do um, these marks against them? Well, what we do, we have programs set up within Bickerdike, and we have uh, people that work with people, how to fix your credit, they have workshops, um, we try to let them know that um, even me or the leasing agent ourselves, let them know you can call free annual credit report. There's a lot of people that don't even know that's available out there. You know, so we'll give them the numbers, we'll get on the website, and we um, send them up here to the girls up here um, that can help them and they could attend a workshop. We try to get all uh, the information, and then when we come across anyone that may need help with a rent or deposit or are in um, risk of um, losing their apartment, like one of our girls, Alyssa, we give her all the person's name, phone number, and what's the problem, and she tracks them down and then offers different programs that can help them, like, you know, Catholic Charities that help you pay your rent, or different programs, El Heap, that'll help you pay your light and gas. We try to help every single person, and sometimes it could be overwhelming, I mean, because like I said, the need is growing, so it's hard. But we, I mean, as long as the people is willing to work with us, we work with them, you know. But then you get the individuals that just don't want to do nothing about it. Unfortunately, we can't help them. Securing housing can be a real challenge for people with criminal backgrounds and poor credit histories. But the problem is much broader than this. Even for people without these complications who have moderate or fixed income and good financial histories, Finding safe and affordable housing is incredibly competitive. We had the opportunity to talk to Joy Araguete, Executive Director of Bickerdike. She emphasized the overwhelming need that exists for affordable rental housing, and how with the economic crisis, new groups of people are finding themselves at risk for homelessness. Uh, I think the need for affordable housing period is uh, extremely high right now. And I mean, I think it was high before we entered into the economic crisis that faces uh, our country and really the world today. Um, but I think in particular, uh, we see uh, a need that we didn't before, or a level of need that we didn't before. Um, the two things that we're seeing really that we hadn't seen before is uh, a lot of people who are coming out of foreclosure that need rental housing. Um, we see um, uh, quite a few renters who were renting and got uh, lost their housing because the building that they were living in went to, into foreclosure. Uh, they were paying their rent, but uh, lost their housing uh, because the owner lost the building. Um, and then we saw uh, an incredible, incredibly high number of people coming out of the shelter system. Uh, people who are homeless, not just out of the shelter system, but people who are doubled up with family members, uh, people who are living, you know, one week with uh, one family member and then the next week with another family member. 
Um, and so I think that the, the need is very high right now. We also uh, saw, particularly with the Section 8 wait list, a lot of people who had recently become unemployed and were uh, uh, very concerned because they were having a hard time making their rent payments and were looking for um, housing that uh, was more affordable to them uh, in the context of trying to uh, live as an unemployed person. And so I, I think uh, there's no doubt about the fact that the economic situation has uh, made the need for affordable housing much greater and that the uh, level of desperation I think that people feel about their housing situations uh, is much greater. Amidst this desperation facing many families and individuals across Chicago, the work being done at Bickerdike is a much needed source of hope and comfort. There, men and women are working tirelessly to help preserve and create affordable housing for Chicago citizens. Andy Nielsen, a Rehab Network program officer, had this impression of the Bickerdike staff and volunteers. I think that the really impressive part about this, which was that after a third day of being taken away from the more glamorous work of development that everyone on the Bickerdike staff was doing, people were still in this windowless room sorting through these applications and having the best time in the world. You know, people were singing and laughing and telling jokes and, you know, everyone's working hard, but uh, no one seemed upset by it. Uh, I, I don't know, it was, a, it was a pretty amazing view of people who understood how each step of the whole process was as important as any other. Um, so people with very advanced training who had doing big real estate deals were just opening envelopes or just entering a yes or no into a computer. And there also was Joy, the executive director of Bigger Dyke, doing the same thing as everyone else did, you know and seeming to take the same amount of joy in it that they were. I think, yeah, that was something I think that'll stick with me. The thing is that Bicker Dyke isn't the only community development corporation working hard to build and maintain affordable housing in Chicago. While Bicker Dyke has been busy processing applications for their Section 8 housing wait list, others are celebrating a new groundbreaking and fighting to preserve funding. They are all here helping keep Chicago a place where people like us can actually live. In our next Talking to Walls episode, we will look more specifically at the important role that community development corporations like Heartland Housing and Latin United Community Housing Association play in our Chicago neighborhoods. Thank you for listening to this episode of Talking to Walls, a project of the Chicago Rehab Network. Many thanks to Bickerdike Redevelopment Corporation, not only on their work preserving and developing affordable housing in West Town, Humboldt Park, and Wicker Park, but in allowing us to create this podcast on their Section 8 lottery. A special thanks to Bickerdike staff Carmen Conde and Joy Araguete, and to our fellow volunteers. Also working on this episode was Aaron Potter. Music found at the beginning and the end of this piece is Bob Dylan's Like a Rolling Stone, recorded in 1965. Learn more about the Rehab Network or listen to future podcasts at our website, www.chicagorehab.org.